Hello everyone, this is Eddie Landeros with MSJC Talent News. Earlier this month, I had the pleasure of talking to one of our fellow students, James Crawford. James Crawford was a winner of the 2020 Coca-Cola Leaders of Promise Scholarship. He's also an honors member and an SI leader for MSJC. He's a really wonderful person. We had a great conversation in this interview and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask, who are you? Um, okay. Well, um, I, uh, my name is James. Um, I'm 18. Uh, grew up in Hemet. Uh, this is my first year at MSJC, uh, first full year. Um, I'm pursuing a degree in uh, political science. Uh, and I don't, I'm a relatively boring person. Um, if I'm being honest, um, I watch the news for fun and I'm a caffeine addict. Like that, that's pretty gotcha. much um, a good, that sums me up pretty well. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right. Um, what, uh, and you're a political science major in MSJC? Mm -hmm. Okay, what made you choose political science for a major? So without getting too deep into like politics and everything, that's fine. That, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it will, I've, I've always been fascinated with, um, with history and with, um, I didn't know it at the time because I didn't have a word for it, but with government, with politics, with different theories, um, and just the way that people, uh, especially within government, act um, and react to one another, um, that's, I, I, that's always just been so interesting to me. Uh, and uh, I think what kind of set my, my life into motion a little bit was uh, when President Trump won in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, to be quite honest, I didn't like him, still don't like him. Um, and so it, it really sort of forced me to reflect and say, say to myself, like, what can I do mm -hmm. to sort of counteract what I'm seeing that I don't like? It's yeah. like, well, I don't like what's going on. What can I do? Now, are you looking to get into um, legislation or um, like lobbying and the, uh, the actual world of politics or using it to take it to the community? So yeah, that, that's a great question. So um, I actually, um, I currently serve on the executive board for the uh, Hemet San Jacinto Democrats. I'm a part of different subcommittees, mostly with voter registration and like youth outreach is wow. typically what I do. Um, I, I would definitely say I'm involved um, politically in the community. Um, I was um, a community team leader for the Elizabeth Warren campaign uh, wow. when she was still running for president. Uh, I've helped out with various state assembly and city council campaigns. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm definitely in, involved in, in the community. Wow. So you have a lot of experience with uh, politics or just political science in general. And, um, you know, and this was before or after you changed your major or just started your major and figured out that's what you wanted to do? It, it's a bit interesting. So um, for the longest time, I thought I was going to go to school for theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually going to go into theater um, and either be a theater teacher or, or pursue um, uh, professional acting. Um, and I went, I went to um, a liberal arts boarding school for theater. Like, it was like this whole thing. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, I, I, cause, like I mentioned, I've, I've always been interested in history and politics. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and obviously the, the examples I gave that sort of, you know, set me into motion a little bit. Um, so I had been a part of the Democrat club um, before I, I, I came to MSJC. Um, and then I came to MSJC and I thought my ambitious goal is that I was going to do political science and theater um, and sort of double major that, yeah, no, that wasn't going to happen. Okay. Um, so uh, I think after, uh, and then while at MSJC, I've done my other stuff on like political campaigns. So um, sort of, sort of a mix. It's sort of been like a weird little roller coaster. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And of course, that's what college is all about. That's what growing is all about. You know, you uh, just learn in all those pockets with political science major. You know, a lot of times with students, they pick a major, they start out with a major and then they find out, oh, this isn't what I wanted to do. Uh, this is totally like the opposite of what I wanted to do. Um, but in your case, it seems like you're very proactive and you know that this is what I wanted to. Uh, this is what I want to do. And is that still the case for you? Yeah, um, it, it most definitely is. Um, I think uh, since being at MSJC and taking more political science classes and sort of delving more into like the, the um, logistics of political science and studying it more, um, I have such a deeper appreciation for it. Um, mm -hmm. And it just encourages me to go out and do everything I'm already doing even more. So yeah.
that's really cool. And when you first started out or when you thought about it, did you feel like you would accomplish everything you've accomplished today? Was it, were you nervous about it? Um, how was that breakthrough? Um, I don't know if I really set any expectations. Mm. Um, I, you know, I feel like it's, you never see young people involved in politics that, yeah. that much. I mean, a majority is older people. Um, and so I, I think going in, I didn't set any expectations um, just because I was like, oh, well, there's no other like young people anyway. So who, who even knows if I'm even going to fit in to mm -hmm. the political realm? Like, um, so I just sort of went in zero expectations and it turned out to be great. So awesome. um, I guess that's a key to life. Don't have expectations. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's that's great. Yeah. You know, because once you set those expectations, sometimes they just backfire because you're like, oh, I never made it. You know, you set the goals too high. So, yeah, you know, just doing it is kind of the first step. So really, yeah, that's that's great. I'm proud for you and happy for you. Um, oh, thank you. Um, and then Speaking on that too, um, you are also involved in other things at, at MSJC. If I'm not mistaken, you're SI, you're involved in honors enrichment. Um, mm -hmm. okay. And then you're also involved in theater at uh, MSJC. Yeah, so um, I, I work as an SI leader. Um, this semester I'm gonna be an SI mentor. Uh, and uh, like you mentioned, I'm a part of the honors um, enrichment, enrichment program. Uh, this semester, I'm also going to be a mentor for, for that. Um, I'm a part of PTK. Um, and uh, I, I have done um, so, uh, some of the plays at MSJC. Um, so yeah, yeah, everything you said well, is okay. correct. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um, so let's start with um, SI. Uh, what do you like about SI? How did you get started with it? Yeah, so um, I didn't know what it was, right until um, I had um, my history 101 um and th there was an si leader um, attached to the class mm -hmm. and i didn't have any friends because this was my, my very first semester last okay. fall um and so i didn't have any friends so i went to si thinking like oh like i don't really know like what this is but uh maybe i'll make some friends <laughs> just because i was that desperate uh, <laughs> and uh it, it turned out that i loved I, I did make friends there which is good uh but it <laughs> ended up helping me in that history class so much. Um, and it was something that I looked forward to. And um, when applications for the new semester came around, I, uh, the SI leader, um, who was my leader, uh, encouraged me to apply. And so I did, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, SI, it's such a welcoming um, community and group of people we really are it sounds really cliche but we really are sort of like a little family unit um it, it's incredible um everyone's so open-minded and diverse and so smart and um just engaged in what they and what they do and it, it's really sort of um incredible that i get to work with such amazing people that's really cool yeah um, yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about SI. Um, I know Elise uh, from The Talent, she's also an SI. Uh, a lot of people that I know are an SI, and every one of them says, you know, that's a great place to, um, you know, build a community and also just help others uh, that want to succeed. So, yeah. Um, and does that work with honors enrichment? You know, because I see a lot of that too, where uh, students are involved in both SI and honors enrichment. So, how did you get started with honors enrichment? Yeah, so uh, I, I've i always loved academics. I've always loved, um, I've always been sort of a little bit nerdy. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, and I was in high school, I was in the AP classes, the honors classes. And so I was like, well, I might as well just continue to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and also it, I heard it from, from my counselor that it would be beneficial for when I transfer. Oh, yeah, um, so I was like, there's so many pros, why not just sign up um, or or apply to be a part of the program. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, and so I, I've noticed too a lot of overlap uh, between SI and, and the honors program. And I, I think it's because the people in both programs tend to be so involved in their academics and they care so much about all, um, a variety of different disciplines and they actually wanna learn um, on a deeper level the, the material. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that that's why there's so much overlap. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I got you. And yeah, and it must help with uh, both cases. So if you're in honors um, and helping people like mentoring people 
and you've been, been involved in SI, that's going to help only boost your experience and boost your ability to help others. So that makes sense. Um, now with that too, something else that boosts that I found in my personal experience is theater. Um, because uh, I was involved in theater in high school and I learned a lot just with being social and improving. Um, has that helped with you um, in like getting uh, started in political science and also just getting started uh, being involved in the community college? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, I've, I've done theater for uh, probably about the last eight or nine years. Um, like I mentioned, I went to a, this liberal arts boarding high school that was specific for like uh, theater and like different art programs. It was a thing, but um, <laughs> I, 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 it really helps you become comfortable in your own skin. Right. And I'm not afraid to look at, look a fool um, in front yeah. of others because, because of that experience. And I think it helps to, um, you mentioned your communications uh, major. Uh, and I, I've noticed uh theaters helped me just talk to be able to to talk to other people to make my voice heard and to be comfortable with doing so um so yeah okay yeah yeah I've, i have the same feelings it's just um it's you kind of just shake it off um especially after being on stage you know whether you're wearing costumes or just like you know having that spotlight on you it's like okay i gotta do something or i'm just going to run away from it uh, but you see yeah. like someone who's like, I'm here to stay and I am going to help even if, you know, I do stumble across the way. So I want to say again, congratulations on your scholarship for the 2020 Coca-Cola Leaders of Promise. Um, and how did you hear about that? Did you know you're going to uh, be involved with it? Um, yeah, let's start with that. Yeah, so um, I heard about it from my counselor. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it popped up on like the honors enrichment canvas shell. I'm sure, I'm sure it popped up many places, but um, <laughs> I remember actually like comprehending what it was from my counselor. Okay. Uh, and so I was like, Oh, thousand dollars. That sounds cool. Like I'll buy. <laughs> um, and I didn't really think anything of it. Uh, you know, it, it's I, again, back to like no expectation. Well, I guess my expectation was I wasn't going to get it, <laughs> but I was like, it's, it's worth applying. Why not? I have nothing else to do. So like, awesome. might as well. Yeah, and not many people uh, were able to uh, get that scholarship. So yeah, I mean, it is a big accomplishment and you seem like someone who's very involved. Uh, not that that has anything to do with accepting the scholarship, but you're, you know, you're someone who is showing that capability and someone who does deserve that scholarship. So yeah, hats off to you because you definitely earned it. Um, and so it was just as easy as that. It's just like talking to a counselor. They said, hey, here's a scholarship and um, apply for it. Yeah, um, it was pretty much as easy as that. And, you know, full transparency, I don't even remember applying. Like, I don't remember <laughs> what the application process really looked like. Um, I'm assuming it was probably, you know, a, a few short answer, uh, short essay questions about, like, community involvement um, and maybe, like, a questionnaire. But um, I, I honestly don't even remember the application process. So it couldn't yeah. have been that difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. Yeah. And that's, that's good that you mentioned that because, you know, sometimes it can just be like, I don't, I don't want to apply, you know, is there so much that goes into applying? Is it, is it worth it? And yeah, it's worth it because it doesn't take that much. You know, there are, there are people to help you at MSJC and uh, it's going to help get you through college um, and even just life in general. So yeah, that's good. So we've been through a hectic semester um, from spring and now the summer. Um, could you tell me a little bit about um, what you're going through and how you're taking it all in? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I, this might shock you, but I'm not a fan of being around other people. Um, <laughs> I really just, I'm not a big people person, uh, okay. which is kind of, you know, a, a bit odd given everything that I do, but uh, and that I'm involved in. So initially quarantine was great for me. You know, being able to just stay home and it be socially acceptable, like to like mm. not talk to other people, like that was <laughs> heaven. Um, obviously, of course, like you know, e economy is crashing. You know, there's a pandemic, so like there's obviously some bad stuff, <laughs> you know, attached to it that I, I, I took into account and everything. But um, in terms of staying in my own bubble, I love that. Uh, I, I did notice though. Uh, like, like I mentioned, I watched the news all the time. Like I just had it on 24 seven. And I noticed that it, it was really taking um, 
a toll on my mental on my mental health uh, quite a bit. Um, I'm sure, as many people notice, uh, if when you watch the news a lot, it's just so much negativity and uncertainty, mm-hmm. and you just when it's on like a repetitive cycle, uh, that you know puts you in a bad place. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so uh, I would say that that was probably my my biggest struggle um, was those moments of um, you know. Uh, not the best mental state um, and not the best mental health. But um, I would say overall, I've adjusted fairly well um, to everything going on. Yeah, just sometimes that negativity just like gets to you. And same with me, I'm more of an introverted person, even though I like to talk to people and do interviews, um, get out on social media. But uh, I recharge by myself because I you know, like to clear my head, meditate, whatever I got to do. Um, so yeah, same thing It's like quarantine was just a perfect, uh, little vacation, uh, from the beginning. Um, and then once you saw all of the, uh, the protests and, you know, just the negativity, the backlash with the pandemic, it's like, are we ever going to, uh, come to a solution? Does that like all of the stuff like, uh, with politics, the current events that's going on through, um, that must push you, uh, towards political science even more, correct? Yeah, um, because so we all have like that one family member on Facebook who shares like fake news and, you know, yeah. likes to post their uninformed opinions. Um, well, that's most of my family and most of my family friends. Um, so I, I, I found in the current climate, uh, not only is, is it important to stay engaged and know what's going on, um, but also to try to get multiple viewpoints. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can establish your own opinion that's not as biased um, as maybe it would be otherwise if you know you only watch one news network um and then it's also important to help inform others right that you know uncle bob who posts you know fake news stories all the time like you know maybe it's important for you to understand so that way you can then tell uncle bob like hey you're wrong here's what's actually going on um you know and the the importance of uh keeping engaged um, and being um, um, informed and, and helping others in that process as well. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I want to do with this is uh, bridge the gap um, and uh, make sure that there are safe spaces, even people that I don't agree with, you know, and that's, that's just going to be life is there's people you're going to disagree with and have to come to a conclusion. And um, sometimes it's hard because you... Uh, you really want to be rational in conversations and social media and just even our own uh, perceptions of situations, we cannot be rational um, in certain conversations or we just can't find that middle ground. Um, do, you, do you find that happening a lot with the conversations that you have with students or those around you or do you think that people are actually rational uh, when it comes to conversation? Um, so... I, I try to find a middle ground, right? Because I know not everyone's going to agree with me. And that's a good thing, right? Like, we can't all agree with each other. Otherwise, like, that's literally like a totalitarian dictatorship. Like, it's good that we don't agree. Um, but um, I find, especially with uh, with a lot of the stuff going on now surrounding, you know, racial inequality, uh, racial justice, um, it's hard to have these conversations uh, with, with other people because not only for me at least it's part of like my morals um i think my my politics and my morals are so like intertwined that sometimes it's like you're going to say something that not only uh differs from my political opinion but it is actually hurting my morals uh, and i think that that can be said for a lot of people um you know you intertwine both spheres and that's not necessarily the best thing to do but um you know and and then also to uh, specific to, to racial inequality is people don't, and I'm not saying that I'm an exception to this, but people just don't understand the origins of racism and how the race doctrine even came to be, really, you know, through, um, through imperialism and uh, bureaucracy. Um, like, people don't understand that. People don't understand the origins of private prison systems, of the police, of, of government, really, as a whole. Um, and without understanding the origins and, how, and the history behind it, how can you speak on the present? And I feel like a lot of people just don't want to take the time or the effort or, you know, 
possibly um, burst their own like little safe bubble of tunnel vision that they put themselves in, they don't they don't want to take that time, that effort, um, or that risk to learn it. And so they stay within their little, um, uh, for lack of a better word, ignorance. Yeah, ignorance is bliss is uh, the common phrase, and that's very true today. Um, sometimes I wish that I could be that way. It's just like I wish I could forget a lot that's going on in the world. You know, it's like because it's a lot of burdens to bear, and a lot of them you can't control. But at the same time, it's just you do take from uh, those world events. You do take from the news that you learn and just try to become a better person for the community around you. So, you know, it's hard to be ignorant. And, um, you know, a lot of times I do come to that conclusion of like, you know, what, I really don't because I want to change. Uh, I want change for the better. I don't want it, things to be the same. You know? So um, you are graduating when? Um, I plan to graduate uh, this, this coming spring. This coming spring. Okay, perfect. Um, and how are you feeling about graduation? Are you nervous for uh, the upcoming fall semester? Are you ready to start it? I'm ready. I mean, it, it, it's going to happen either way. So, mm -hmm. you know, other get on the bus or don't get on the bus. I don't know. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I know it's not as simple as that, you know, for, for so many people. But um, in my case, I'm ready. I am just want to get it over with, you know, um, and and you know, move on, um, you know, continue with life. Okay, yeah, so no expectations kind of deal with that, you know, just don't set it, just do it. Okay. Yeah, just do it, you know, roll with the punches, make okay. the best out of the situation that, you know, we're all in right now. Yeah, of course. Um, and so after uh, you graduate, what are you planning to do with your degree? Are you planning to transfer? Yeah, I'm planning to, uh, to transfer, um, probably within the UC system is, is what I'm, um, Looking at uh, UCR, UC Berkeley, uh, UCLA are, are my top choices at the moment. Um, um, and to obviously continue um, getting my degree in political science. Um, and I, I eventually want to get my um, doctorates um, in political theory. Um, so that way I can um, become a professor. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. So dream job would be to be a professor? Yeah, um, I would definitely say that, that that that's there, you know, unless, you know, I'm handed a, a seat in the Senate, then, you know, I, I would definitely take that any day. But, um, uh, you know, uh, being a professor, I think, um, is, is what I really want to do um, and helping educate other other people to the best of my ability. Of course, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that you're going to do really great in that because you have just a great way of speaking. You know clearly what you want to say. Um, and we obviously don't have that in politics, really, um, you know, just to say, but yeah, no, you're very uh, pleasant to talk to. And I do believe that you'll go far with your degree. Oh, um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. So I want to thank you really for joining me uh, in this talk. And I hope that this inspires a lot of other students around us. Yeah, I, I hope so as well. And thank you so much for uh, congratulations. And thank you for, for having me and having this conversation. I really hope you enjoyed the interview. If you'd like to be a part of the video interview process or anything journalism on MSJC, please join the talent. It's a great experience. All right, see you everyone. Bye.